a big goof. Oh, yeah, please do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't work at Atari, but I saw Pong in a bowling alley. I went home and said, "Oh my God, I have to have this." I told my father before I was out of high school, "I'm going to own a 4K Data General Nova someday." But eventually, Steve Jobs came and said, "Why don't we build it for them and start a company called Apple?" At first, everyone I think says, "No, no, 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 no! I would be horrible. I will never ever. I can't go on TV and dance. I can't dance." I, eventually, Steve Jobs came back and he took my game down to Atari and he got a job. He had Steve working at night so he wouldn't be around other people. <laughs> You know, I like knowing little trivia bits. So these, all these people, as we walk through the museum, curators, they know the little tiny bits that really make the stuff interesting that don't necessarily have to do with its meaning to humans. My new name card, I have a metal name card, and part for my phone number, I actually used the Hallerith card. If you get up here, it's got columns of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's got numbers, and I actually punch out the numbers on my business card to, to um, you know, it's sort of symbolic of these machines. So glad to be able to represent the, the museum, and I speak as though we did this, we did that. And I'm sort of like an unofficial part of the museum, but um, it's um, all, everything since this museum started is so dear to me. It's the best mm -hmm. museum in the world, in my opinion, for computers. Yes. So I like all the different gadgets, the ways that they work, ways that seem more human, seem easier for me that I enjoy better. I, I do it by feeling. And if I feel better the way I use one device, an iPad, yeah. say, then I like that kind of device. If, and right now I love speaking those commands to my phone because I don't have to think yeah. to speak. Um, you know, even if it's, you know, navigate to Joe's Diner or call Janet Mobile. I don't have to memorize all the sets of, of ways to do things. So computers becoming human is very important to me. I saw Pong in a bowling alley. I went home and said, oh my God, I have to have this. And my way was, I, I'm a good designer. I designed my own 28 little $1 chips on a board. I had Pong playing on my TV set at home. Most people were using the Model 19, and I used the Model 26. And nobody else used the Model 26 because it was for a different computer. They used a lot of relays to make decisions inside about yes or no, which switch is on, which is off, which lights are already on. Really the first hard disk drive under today's type of hard disk mechanisms, they had strange things like the head had to float above all these spinning cylinders. The multiple spinning cylinders were for parallelism. It's really so popular in the technology five, world. I think you went into everyone's home with your participation in Dancing with the Stars. What made you decide to foray into that um, um, show. So much pressure from very nice producers and from <laughs> friends saying, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. Finally, I gave in. At first, everyone, I think, says, no, 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 I would be horrible. I will never, ever, I can't go on TV and dance. I can't dance. So everyone says that at first. But they tell you about the show and they tell you they have trainers and you'll be okay. And, and after a while, they, they get through to you. Uh, eventually, Steve Jobs came back and he took my game down to Atari and he got a job. Atari was in Los Gatos, California, where I live now. Very proud of that. So I used to go in and visit at night. They had Steve working at night so he wouldn't be around other people. <laughs> it's been bad. It's been bad. It's been bad. And uh, then he got us a job. I designed the first breakout game for Atari. Yeah. So I didn't really work there. They tried to hire me, but I said, never leave Hewlett Packard. I love my company. I'm loyal. These computers were built right here, so it's an immense amount of effort and work that went into these large machines to have something like a few video screens that could give a little information to, to the, um, the, opera, the computer operators was unbelievably expensive back then, but this was pretty much the most expensive computer in the world. Go in my little room at home, shut the door, nobody knew I did this. No friends, no parents, no teachers, and I would just start to design with chips, the chips that were available in those days, how many chips could I make this computer in? Try to get better and better and better. Just um, uh, competed with myself. The Data General Nova was introduced. The whole computer fit on one board of chips. What is the absolute least I can use and get the same result? This computer was just as fast as the others, half as many chips as all the other mini computers around here. And you know, I discovered the reason, and it includes my life so much. I told my father before I was out of high school, I'm gonna own a 4K Data General Nova someday. Because 4K is enough that I could type my programs in like I used to do with punch cards. And of course, I'd have to buy a teletype, cost as much as a car, and, and I had that poster on my wall in high school and always wanted somehow to bring things home to this scale. Well, what is pushing the state of the art of the silicon industry nowadays? Personal computers and now games. 
the highest, most powerful chips that are made on Earth are, are made for game machines. So the legacy of the little personal device has come true. My dad said, how are you going to do it? It costs as much as a house. And I said, I was stunned. I didn't realize that was the cost. And I said, I'll live in an apartment. I was going to have a computer someday, this particular computer, and that, that drive hung with me. And we stayed up all night, all day, all night long. We both got the sleeping sickness mononucleosis. Steve Jobs and I both got it doing that project, delivered a working breakout game, and uh, it was one of the, the highlights of my life. Yeah, which, what you can do with zero money at all, nobody to borrow it from, no savings account. That's the story of the Apple One and the Apple II. Yeah, for about half as many chips, it did 10 times as much as the Apple One. And no computer in the world expected, nobody expected color to come to computers. And there was an Apple One, me and Steve Jobs, and I looked and I said, that was when I realized, if I saw, look over somebody's shoulder and- Are you st some still continuing to dance, or? Um, I haven't continued that much, but I want to, and my wife and I want to take lessons. Because yes. I want to learn all the different types of dances are like all the different computer programming languages. Yes, yes you learn a certain kinds of steps that are in this dance, but they might not be in another type. And some, there's some carryovers, and whether you step with toe leads or heel leads in certain places. Well, thank you for your time, Steve, mm -hmm. and great uh, showing of this museum. Okay, yeah. We nice call it a revolution. Well, it's been so much change in, in one lifetime. And never before in the history of man, I don't think we've gone through so much change in the ways you do every single thing in life. And computers just change so fast, you can't keep up anymore. You can just have a few select ones, try a few features out, but um, you, can't, you could be a total expert back in the days of the Apple One and Two. I think you have to have the name Steve Wozniak. Wozniak. Yeah, to, you have to be a genius, basically, to carry Woz. a card like that. Yes, <laughs> this, this makes a statement.